Hey everybody, welcome to The Word on the Street with Gabby and Michael, where we mention it all about your favorite Bravo celebrities and the shows that they star in. Well, welcome to episode two. We're so excited to be here. We're going to dive in right now to all the latest Bravo news. And The Word on the Street is that Denise is not going to be coming back to Beverly Hills next season. And what are our thoughts on that? I really don't believe her that she is leaving because they're not paying her enough money. I think that's an easy cop out. I heard a rumor that she signed a contract that was four seasons, four million, so one million a season. Well, we're going to touch on this in a moment, but considering the reason why Leah may not be rejoining Real Housewives of New York City is because they were only paying her $3,000 an episode, which equates to about like $60,000. And what I think is, yes, Denise was a bigger name. And I think maybe she brought fans to the show because of who she is. Yeah. I don't think these big actresses or big names honestly make the best housewives because they're actresses. They don't get reality TV. And I think we need to stray away from having these big names. Honestly, I think if we are going to get newbies, let's stop talking Nicolette Sheridan or Kris Jenner, these people that are already kind of household names. Let's let's get some Brandy Glanville, some, you know, Taylor Armstrong, some less known women, because I think they make a lot better TV. Definitely. I, and I, the only thing I disagree with you on is the Kris Jenner part. She knows reality TV. Okay, let's just get into the Kris Jenner thing because I've been having a lot of comments on my TikTok like Kris Jenner and I've been seeing a lot of Kris Jenner things. What do you think about her on Beverly Hills? I personally don't want her on there. I love her. Let me preface that by saying I love her. She's the only Jenner Kardashian that I actually really like. I think she's hilarious. I just... I, I feel like if she was on the show, the girls would suck up to her. And I don't, That's I just, you know what I mean? I just don't see drama with her. Or I don't, I don't know. Um, it's really tough because she would definitely fill the hole for a lot of fans of where Keeping Up with the Kardashians used to be. Yeah. And I mean, granted, I'm more of a Bravo fan than I am a Keeping Up with the Kardashians stand. Yeah. I feel like you're either more of a Bravo, Real Housewives, or you're a Keeping Up with the Kardashians person. Totally. So that being said, I think it would be really cool if Kris Jenner joined only because she knows reality TV. She knows yeah. the women. And that's one of the things that Andy Cohen has always said makes the show successful. Yeah. Those prior connections are important. I almost think she's too big of a name. and I think the ladies will suck up to her. I think Rena will, Kyle, obviously. Oh, yeah. Well, Kyle's already friends with her. There's also talk about Kathy Hilton, but we can get into that when we discuss Beverly Hills later, because we'll do a little segment about season 11 and kind of what our thoughts on the next season. But our next piece of news is, yeah, we kind of touched on this earlier, but Leah is in still in negotiation for her season, I believe, 13 contract for Real Housewives of New York. As Gabby said, she was only paid $3,000 an episode. I mean, I still think that's really little if you're only making $60,000 a season. Granted, she does get unlimited advertisement for Married to the Mob. I also learned recently that Bravo gets a cut of any business that the housewives promote on the shows. So that with them getting a cut, maybe it wasn't worth, worth it for yeah, them. Yeah, only sixty k. I mean... I still think it was kind of worth it because, especially because of how well the fans received her. And I just felt like she was so cool, genuine, brought this great breath of fresh air to the show that we desperately needed. I just don't understand why Bravo wouldn't pay, be willing to pay her more after they saw this great reception that we all had to her. Yeah, I think she's worth every penny. I would say at least like five times that, like maybe 300K. I think she's worth it. And we lost Tinsley and Dorinda. There also was rumors that they were potentially already filming season 13 today. Sonia was with potential newbie Alicia Quarles, I believe her name is. She's a journalist and fashionista. And she's African-American, which I think is awesome because I've been seeing a lot of fans, including me, wanting more diversity in the show. Obviously, we saw Garcelle on Beverly Hills, the first woman of color on Beverly Hills. And obviously, New York City is 
so dense with so many different ethnicities. You know, I do believe that we should have more diversity on there. So breaking news is that Nene Leakes is leaving the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Andy Cohen posted about it. He posted a really sweet tribute to Nene. And I just, I was so bummed. Pretends to be shocked because I'm not. Because I've been keeping up with the gossip and I just knew that she wasn't coming back. I know they've been filming. So I've kind of just been waiting for the announcement. I was in denial. What I heard was that she was holding out on her contract and she held out so long that they had already filmed and she wanted to come back and it was like, too late, girl. I'm going to miss her. I think I love Atlanta. I think it's a strong cast, but I think it's starting to get to a point where all the girls have been on for so long. We kind of might need to get to a point where we need to need like a bigger shape up or some new girls because they've been all been on for so long. I just feel like Nene brings a lot of the drama. Like I like Candy and Cynthia, but they're they don't bring that much drama for me. When you think of Atlanta, you think of Nene Leakes. Yeah. Andy Cohen summed it up perfectly in his Instagram quote was saying, the icon of the genre. And he also referred to her as the gif and catchphrase machine. She definitely put Housewives on the map. Her and Teresa, I will always say. So we definitely owe a lot to Nene and she will definitely be missed. And if Kenya ever leaves, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Well, she did already leave, but we got her back. That's me with Portia. I'll be really bummed with Portia. Give Portia her own show. I did hear our girls are feuding. I've heard that the only drama right now on this season that's filming is the feud between Kenya and Portia. That's been a that's been a fun feud. For those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, Michael is Team Portia. I am Team Kenya. Although I do like Kenya too, but. Kenya is in my top three of favorite yeah. housewives of all time. So our next piece of tea is that Teddy Mellencamp has been getting exposed in the media right now for her all in by Teddy for her unethical methods of, I don't even know what to call it, accountability. But basically, I've seen that she, her plan makes you eat 450 calories a day, which is crazy. I drink 450 calories a day. So <laughs> um, that's a little problematic for me. But I've also seen some of the meals. There was a lunch and it was literally three pieces of lettuce, a slice of avocado, and like a piece of onion, like, like rabbit food. And I've seen you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement and they make you pay over Venmo. I mean, a lot of sketchy things. They make you like send pictures of your scale. And I saw a text conversation. This girl went on a date and Teddy like went off on her and was like, oh, you're putting a man over your health and wellness and weight loss. And yeah, I think she's a fraud. It's like another reason that we dislike Teddy. We don't need any more. We also got some exciting news that we're getting a new city, Salt Lake City. I'm really excited. So we saw the series trailer got released. I learned that at first I thought it was a trailer for the season itself, but it was actually just an intro to the series itself, which is which was more exciting for me because I didn't see a lot of the drama and I was like, whoa. I'm like, kind of confused. I want more drama. The series itself looks really interesting. You know, religion is going to play a huge part, but I don't think it's going to be a boring part just because a lot of the girls, they have different religions. There's, I think, one or two Mormon girls. Someone's Pentecostal, which I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. <laughs> another girl is Jewish, and then another girl's converting to Islam and another girl is leaving the Mormon church. So we have a lot of different journeys with religion that we're going to see. And the yeah. only time we ever have really seen a discussion about religion was on season four of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills between Carlton and Kyle. But aside from that scenario, we have not seen any real religious uh, storyline. And I think with Housewives, especially when you're starting a new city, you really got to focus on what makes the city interesting. So with Dallas, we saw the charity events and, you know, the Dallas Society with Deandra and Cameron. We also have interesting news because the Mary Cosby, who is one of the new cast members, she married 
her late grandma's second husband. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? That is a whole mess. I've been a Bravo fan for so long now. I almost wonder like, well, what parts are they going to give us and what parts are they going to hold back? My thoughts with Mary Crosby are that we're going to get a lot of juicy information, but I don't think we're going to get the whole story. Oh yeah, for sure. We, I saw that her step, well, her step grandpa, but now it's her husband. He was 20 years younger than her grandma. Okay. So I'm not sure how many years older he is than her, but they do have a son together. And I also saw another thing that her grandma was very rich, like rich, rich, because she owned like churches and restaurants and a lot in the city. So it was a big fortune. There may have been some foul play with her grandma dying. And I heard they had to, I think the word is exhume her body. Like they brought her body out from the underground to basically investigate more. Wow, you've done some serious digging in that. I also heard some tea on the drama is that we're going to get multiple physical fights. One girl's going to have a black eye when they go on a trip to Vegas. I, I, I'm excited because I think that trailer was just a series trailer and we're going to get a season trailer with the drama, the fights. And Andy's been saying it's an explosive season. To, to our viewers, we don't condone any physical violence. No. <laughs> We just love a good, dramatic reality TV scene. Exactly. Last thing about Salt Lake City, there was a, there's a new girl, Heather. She kind of looks a little manlier, but I mean, she's still a pretty girl. I'm not going to diss her looks, but somebody commented, so is she going to come out as trans or something about her being transgendered? And she replied back and like, really great. She said, I'm not trans, but I don't see that as a diss. You know, I support the LGBTQ community. So it was nice to hear that, especially because she's the, one of the girls that's one of like the raised in the Mormon church is Mormon. So it was nice to hear that. She also, uh, what from what I've read about her is that she's moving away from the Mormon church. She has three daughters and she runs a very successful spa business in Salt Lake City. I'm looking forward to getting to know her, especially some of the things I've seen about her that you were just talking about. I really yeah. like. And also that's just one of my favorite parts of a new franchise is getting to know a new cast. I love it. Like it's so refreshing to just get new girls new city, new everything. New opening lines. Yes. That's what I think with OC, you know, we're on season 15. It's okay to cancel the series. Like we can always have new cities and shake it up a little bit. So all in all, 2020 has been a horrible year in every realm of the universe, especially in reality TV with losing the Kardashians, Dorinda, and now NeNe Leakes. Yeah. And in the last year itself, going into 2019, we've lost Tinsley, Bethany. We lost, I mean, I'm not mad about it, but we lost Tamara and Vicky, Lisa Vanderpump, Denise now, and Aliane Locken. I mean, they're really, they're going away. It's, it's kind of scary. <sighs> Who was the hardest loss for you? So the hardest loss for me would probably be uh, losing Lisa Vanderpump because I miss going to Villa Rosa so much and seeing Diamonds and Rosé, uh, her miniature horses, and I miss her dogs and her claws. Hanky and Panky. I miss Hanky and Panky. <laughs> That was actually the only reason I got into Vanderpump Rules was to fill the void in my heart for Lisa Vanderpump when she left. I think the hardest loss for me was Bethany. At first, especially, but as season 12 aired, I was like, you know, it, it was okay without her. I felt like the middle seasons of New York kind of lacked something without her, but I felt like we were okay without her. Like I missed her, but I wasn't, I was like, this is still entertaining. But I think a lot of that had to do with Leah. I really like Leah. And so if we lose Leah, I think I'm really going to struggle. Leah really made up for the fact that we were all missing Bethany so much. Yeah. I think there's still a chance that Leah could come back. So prayer circle for that. But I think it's time to get into the Real Housewives of New York reunion part one. My question for you is best dressed. 
best dress for me this reunion was easy it was tinsley she didn't come to play she came to slay that dress was gorgeous on her i got such carrie bradshaw vibes i think i would have to agree with you i struggled with most of the looks i felt like dorinda's i like a flowier dress so i wanted i wanted more I felt like Ramona looked really good. Ramona and Sonia looked good, but I felt like their looks were a little more basic. Mm -hmm. I liked Leah's, but I felt like it wasn't fitting for a reunion. And so honestly, my top two were Tinsley and I actually liked Luann's. It was basic, it was simple, but I liked the little diamonds on the sides. Luann looked beautiful. It was like a very classic silhouette fit for her. It just was very flattering on her. Uh, Ramona is one of my least favorite housewives, but I thought she looked very, very uh, lovely at the reunion. She looked good, yeah. I loved the straight hair. Um, her dress looked beautiful on her and her skin looked insanely good. Lots I liked Sonia's hair too. It was like a simple, sleek, sleek, I don't know if that's the word, bob, like, I just thought that was really fitting for her. So getting into the drama, first of all, we have finally a in-person reunion, which I'm excited about. I know I've, I've heard, I listen to some podcasts and I read, and a lot of people say they like the Zoom better. And I have to disagree. I like the in-person better. This was a little weird because not even the social distance part, but they were like literally in a warehouse so the setting was kind of weird. It was like a props warehouse. So there was rugs. Was there were so many rugs and none of them even came close to matching. It looked tacky. Disregarding the setting, I like having the girls in person a lot better. Me too. So we immediately get into the Leah and Ramona drama because as we see, Ramona has not been really socially distancing during quarantine. She was in Florida and taking pictures with people at restaurants. So Leah made a video on Instagram basically attacking her and I don't blame her. And I just don't think Ramona gets it. It's not about her, it's about her disrespecting everyone else, especially being in New York City where the cases have been really high. Obviously, you understand that she doesn't get it because she keeps yelling, I don't have the virus. I don't have the virus. And it's not about her not having the virus currently. It's about her being respectful to other people. And Ramona is not known for being nice to other people. She's one of the most inconsiderate people, I think, not only on New York, but across all the franchises. Yeah, I totally agree. And all the fans... I have not seen one fan say they met her and they had a good experience. Other housewives too, uh, Giselle, uh, Margaret Josephs, she's had drama with Vicky. So she's just a horrible person in my opinion. I think the funniest thing she said though was she's like, people were raving about me and Avery saying that we were inspirational. I'm like, trust me, I don't think anyone finds you inspirational, let alone your daughter that's basically a clone of you. We got into the Dorinda and Tinsley drama towards the end. And I had felt this whole season that Dorinda was unnecessarily mean to Tinsley. And I still felt the same way. Her baster comment, I think, was awful, especially because Andy obviously had a baby unconventionally. You see, he's gay and he's single. So I just think that, especially with him there, that just so rude. And I feel like she started owning her stuff, but not really. So Scott basically gave John money. I don't really know what the reason was, but it was really interesting seeing that unseen footage because I remember seeing her in that white sweater, turtleneck, whatever, yelling on the phone in the trailer for last season. Mm -hmm. And it never was aired and I kind of forgot about it. But when they showed it again on the TV, I was like, I remember seeing this before, but Obviously, we never saw it. So it kind of gives us some closure as viewers, like, okay, maybe this is the reason why this spilled over into earlier in the season and why, you know, Jorinda had this hate towards Tinsley because it kind of felt like it was coming out of left field. I mean, I still think it's uncalled for. Be mad at John or Scott. I don't know. It was completely uncalled for. It was really mean. And as we've seen, 
um, through Tinsley's seasons on Roni is that she, she's not good at defending herself. So mm -hmm. I just feel like Dorinda, she comes in like a tank. It really just almost felt like kicking a puppy. Exactly. And she was to Tinsley. And, and Tinsley really isn't one of my all-time favorite housewives, but I don't think she's a bad person at all. I personally really like Tinsley. I don't know, something about her like resonates with me, but I... Honestly, I will say this might be unpopular, but I like Dorinda a lot, but I had said before the season started that I just found her a little bit overrated. I think she, she was mean in past seasons too. And I don't, I feel like the fans are like finally like seeing it, but she was very mean and angry. in a lot of the past seasons too, the way she treated Sonia so there was a lot that she was really nasty before and I feel like the fans gave her a pass for a long time until this season and I think she was meaner this season for sure but we've seen these patterns before with her but I feel like now she's finally the fans are kind of canceling her for it okay so we have still two more parts of the Real Housewives of New York reunion so should be interesting to see what else goes down but I think it's time to get into part three of the Beverly Hills reunion and the end of season 10. So we started off the reunion with Denise and Rena drama. What's new? I mean, it's, it's been happening the whole reunion. It's also just happened like nonstop throughout this whole season. Like, are you friends or are you not? Yeah, I'm over it. And you guys know I'm a Rena stan. I love my girl Rena, but I really didn't like her on this episode, especially with the part where Denise was threatening to show the text between the two. I thought it was really interesting because, you know, Rena's all about own it and, you know, be all about who you are. And when Denise threatened to show the text, she goes, well, this is, that's private. But she, here she is trying to air all this dirty laundry about Denise potentially sleeping with Brandy and whatever it, else. It was so hypocritical. And then she immediately changes the sub subject and deflects. And, and, you know, I love her, but that's, it, that made me mad. You don't show up with printed receipts and then say, oh, but my business is private not not cool and she's usually pretty open everything now i want to know what the texts are i feel like denise should have aired it because they've been airing all of her her dirty laundry all season let's 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 switch up the tables let's see i feel like that has a big part of of why denise richards is not coming back and she's using the like not enough money as her way out if she stayed on for the next season she would have to address all of this like there's no way she could go through another season without yeah. giving everybody the truth there's no resolution there's no going forward we had to have a change up because next season guess what it would have been gang up on Denise season, get, you know, all this stuff because one, the girls aren't going to stop and two, Denise is not going to be accountable. I mean, we can't have this again another season because I, the fans, me, I can't take it any longer. So I'm happy that she's gone. We're tired of this. Yeah. And I'm done. Yeah. I'm just done with it. The next drama part was the Erica Broadway. We had the little Erica Broadway segment and we saw that Garcelle and Denise didn't go. And it was kind of funny seeing Garcelle get called out. Like, I don't think it mattered if she was there or not. She can still support Erica. But it was funny how her first excuse was the flights, you know, the airplane's too small. And then they're like, well, you could have gone commercial. And then it turned into, oh, well, my, I had my kids and my husband. So it was kind of, that was kind of funny, but I don't think it mattered. It doesn't, but I just feel like Garcelle has been very like transparent about how she wants to be upfront about everything. And it just seemed like, just be honest, come on. Yeah. yeah, she was probably too busy. I mean, the first half of the season, she barely showed up to anything. But what pissed me off the most was Teddy, like, like Teddy go away You're, this isn't your fight if Erica was so mad that they didn't show up then she could call it out and be mad about it but why are you gonna be like 
she goes, Denise and Garcelle, you guys are all women supporting women, but it's funny when one of the women is doing something and you guys are nowhere to be found. Can you explain yourselves? It's like, why should they explain themselves to you? Who are you? Yeah, you're not everyone in the group's accountability coach. Go be accountable for your all in by Teddy starving people. Go do that because I can't handle her any longer. Uh. The other T, and I did a little research on this, was at the end of the episode, we saw Lisa Rinna mention Heather Lockler. And Denise obviously got mad about it. And Andy's like, obviously wanting to stir the pot, like wanting Rena to talk about it. And she's like, well, just Google it. So guess what I did? I Googled it. So the T is, obviously we know that Denise was with Charlie and Heather was, her husband was Richie Sambora, who was part of the Bon Jovi band. And Denise and Heather were friends from, well, I know they were on Melrose Place together. The funniest part of that is that Denise's character's name was Brandy of all names. <laughs> so anyway, they were friends. They were a couple friends, whatever. Denise and Charlie split up. And a couple months later, when Heather and Richie split up, Denise is dating Richie. Now, Denise says that it didn't matter because her and Heather weren't friends at the time. But I don't know about you, but I still think it's kind of shady if you're dating one of your best friend's exes. It's a massive violation of girl code. So even if you even if you guys aren't close at the moment or you're not friends, I don't, I think it's kind of shady. And it's kind of fun, you know, finding this tea on Denise because we're kind of seeing her shady this season. So it makes me wonder, you know, all these past things. It makes me kind of curious. So Heather hit up Brandy on Instagram and DM'd her and basically showed her support to Brandy saying, thank you for telling your truth about Denise, basically them bonding about disliking Denise. And Brandy wanted Heather to be on Watch What Happens Live but guess what Denise had done in the past before? Sent a cease and desist. So she's known to do that, I guess. What's that her go-to? Yeah, literally. She doesn't want to talk about it. She'll just send a cease and desist. So she, pro she might send one to us now. <laughs> the other kind of overlapping thing is that she also told Brandy that her and Heather were never friends. And that's what she told the girls in the group is that her and, her and Brandy were never friends. So we're kind of seeing these same stories and same patterns. So it's kind of making me second guess her. I'm questioning everything Denise is saying. I really don't believe that Brandy took the time to edit her text message chain with Denise. No. Uh, I don't believe any of that. And I don't know that Brandy was fully 100% honest. She probably was elaborating on some of it, but I still for the most part, do believe there's truth. I do believe they hooked up, but I just don't care anymore. I agree. And as we said last week, we're tired. We're done. So with season 10 finally coming to a close, what are your thoughts on next season? Who do we think is coming back? Who do we think's going? I don't see no. Kyle leaving anytime soon. I feel like we're gonna be getting a new cast member. Who, um, I think I thought we'll stay actually. You do. You know, originally she said that she wouldn't come back if Denise didn't come back, but then I just saw recently that she said she would come back. And I do want to see her come back. I do like her. And I just hope that she'll be more involved and you know more active in the group this upcoming season. I would love, I think a lot of fans would love to see Sutton full time. If she can get that figured out, I think she's got a diamond waiting for her. Yeah, I really think Dorit will be back. I mean, she's, I, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but she's a fan favorite now. I mean, I like her. She's not my favorite still, but I do like her a lot. I think Rena will be back, love her, hate her. She brings the drama. She brings the entertainment. Kyle's an OG. Um, I think Garcelle Sutton, I think they'll both be back. Maybe Sutton as a friend. Um, I think Teddy's going to be gone. I think she's coming back. Okay, we'll see. We'll bet on that one. I'd be really surprised if, if Teddy doesn't come back. And if 
if she doesn't come back in um in a full full-time capacity i think she's going to come back as a friend maybe as a friend maybe her and sutton will switch and maybe we'll just see her a little bit she's we can't get rid of her i guess but we'll see and then what do you think about erica because i've been on the fence with her i mean i love her but i'm on the fence too uh i i think she will come back but i don't say that with 100 percent certainty yeah because i mean i love her but i feel like maybe she's run her course now that fans are starting to um, say more like, we want to know more about your life. Why don't you give us more? I feel like that could be a main reason why she pulls away from the show. She is very private in certain aspects, whereas other parts like her performance life, she's an open book. Yeah. So I feel like now that fans have gotten their fill of her uh, life on the road as a performer, they want to know more about Erica Girardi at home. And I don't yeah. think she wants to share that with people. No, I don't think so either. And I think the issue with this season is she started off, I think we've got to see more of her. We saw Shaker where she used to dance. We got the scene with her and Tom when she was crying to Tom. And, you know, when he was just showing her love, his love and his support for her. I think that was really what she needed. But I feel like this season was a hard season to really show your your life because it turned into Denise and Brandy. And that was all we got for the last half of the season. I am starting to notice that we're not getting a full life story from all of these housewives no. um, right off of the bat. Like Lisa Renna, for instance, she mentioned that Harry has a son with the very first Bond girl, Ursula Andress. And Renna has been on the show since the fifth season. And she just now mentioned that she had yeah. a stepson which I found interesting. So that in and of itself made me wonder about Lisa Rinna and how open she really is. All the girls, they all have skeletons. It's not specific. I mean, I feel like they all have things that they don't want to share. Yeah. So if we do get newbies, I know we kind of talked about the potential of Chris. I did see the potential of Kathy Hilton and I wanted to see what you thought about that. I would be all for it. I think that would bring in more dramatic storylines. I think it would bring in her daughters, Paris and Nikki. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we've had Kim and Kyle and, you know, Kathy has played this role in a way because it was all when the Kim and Kyle drama was in the first couple of seasons, mm -hmm. Kim would always mention Kathy and how, you know, Kathy was more on Kim's side. And so it's always been this trio, these three sisters that have always had this family drama and we never really got to meet Kathy. So I think it'd be interesting. I just don't know about the drama aspect. I think if we do get newbies that aren't Kathy or Kris Jenner, well, Kathy Hilton or Kris Jenner, then I say, give us people we don't know. Agreed. I'm all for Kathy joining and I'm all for brand new people who we know nothing about. I know Beverly Hills is like one of your favorite cities. It was one of the yeah. shows that originally got me into the Housewives. Yeah, same here. I hope it goes back to its original glory yeah. at some point. Yes, that was the best. And I, like I said before, I think we need to stray away from these actresses that are somewhat well known because they don't always make the best Housewives. Like we saw with Denise, I hope Bravo learned their lesson. So something that Michael and I both love is fun facts. And we wanted to share a fun fact with you at the end of every single episode slash podcast. So for this week, we have a fun fact that's all about Lady Sonia Morgan. And she is one of Michael's favorite housewives. She is not one of my favorites. However, I do find her highly entertaining. She just like bothers me for a lot of other reasons. <laughs> She's probably in my top 10, so. So let's spill some tea on Lady Sonia Morgan's ex-husband, you know, who we never hear about. Um, Sonia married into the very, very wealthy Morgan family, which is a very... Uh, well-known banking empire and she married into that family when she married J.P. Morgan's grandson John Adams Morgan and Sonia was his fourth wife. Crazy. Yeah. And did you know they were only married for like seven years? Yeah they married in like 
1995 and were done by 2000. Today, yeah. John, Sonia's ex-husband, is 89 years old. Currently, today. It's crazy because the daughter is younger than me and she's like t- 19. Mm-hmm. Quincy is the name of Sonia's daughter. So her and- dad is literally like almost 90. He's almost 90. He's 34 years older than Oh Sonia. my God. Ever, even bigger age difference between Sonia and her husband than there is between Tom and Erica Girardi, which is mm-hmm. crazy to me because I thought the Girardis like hit the cap at the high, at the big yeah. gap. Um, and since Sonia and her husband, John, divorced, he has since married again to his fifth wife. Well, good to know. We love Sonia. I feel like this week has been a Sonia week for me. I just made two TikToks yesterday that had something to do with Sonia. So <laughs> she's my housewife of the week, I guess. Yeah, we started our Instagram account. It'll be below. We will at we will put our Instagram handle below, but it is at the word on the street is underscore podcast. Um, we got a little intro to both myself and Gabby on there, as well as we'll be posting updates to when we'll have new episodes and we'll be putting Bravo news on our story. So you'll definitely want to follow us. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you for our next episode. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.